be seated. Welcome to all of you this morning. It is so nice to have you in worship. Um, I am Reverend Barbara Thursby. I am from 29 Palms. My husband is a pastor there. And I am retired. I haven't, I've been retired for four or five years, and I still haven't figured out what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm, we are glad to have you all here. Do we have any visitors this morning? Yes. Kind of a visitor. I've been coming out here for 42 years. But uh, my name is Ken Mackey, and I always come to this church when I'm here and have a wonderful time doing it. So. Well, we are glad you're here this morning. Uh, I'm Doug Brown. Uh, I'm from Port Orange, Florida. We're actually, we're actually camping here at the Happy Travel down the road, and we thought we'd visit your service for the day. And I'm Carol Petzold, and I'm also from, uh, I'm from Deland, Florida, originally from Rhode Island. Still have some of the accent where we park the cars in the yard. <laughs> anyway, the music is wonderful. This is such a, you can tell when you walk in, it's just a, a very warm, loving congregation, and the music is spectacular. Yeah. We, we have people who come, the, the church has people who come quite often from Canada or from Michigan, especially in December and January. We don't get too many people from Florida that I know of. We're glad you're here this morning. Thank you. Um, I'm Steve Chown, Judy's in the choir. I hate to say this, we will be leaving after today, but that's not my point. We'll be back in September, but I want to introduce our son, Frank. Frank is here for the week, um, and this is his first time here at this beautiful place. So being here for a week, do you get the privilege of helping to pack up and <laughs> are there any other guests this morning yes my husband and I are from Grace Presbyterian and that's in Temecula and we're just down here visiting so we came to church <laughs> very good we're glad you're here are there any other guests this morning I'm looking the wrong way. Guess won't be in the choir. <laughs> Let us continue our worship. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. First of all, a little housekeeping, show and tell. These are at the end of your pews, and it helps us so much if you sign these and pass them down the pews. Um, we have people who actually keep track of our attendance. It's required by our presbytery, but it's just very helpful if you will do this for us. So thank you so much. <laughs> Empty, okay. <laughs> Grab one from before or back of you, okay. The beautiful flowers on a communion table this morning were given by Jackie Morgan in honor of her husband Jeff's birthday on April 5. Uh, Jeff, we hope you had a wonderful birthday. Today is our monthly Congregational Life Luncheon following worship. Please plan to stay today and join us for a light lunch and fellowship. These luncheons have been very enjoyable all season for all of our members and friends. And we thank Elder Pauline and her wonderful committee for all of their hard work. Pauline plans to take a little break over the summer at some point and then resume in the fall. 
So we will keep you apprised as to that schedule. This may be our last one or it may not be our last one, but we'll, we'll let you know. Next Sunday the 14th will be the last day to donate stuffed animals to be carried in our emergency vehicles locally to comfort children in crisis. Our last item this morning is something new and very special. And we think you may want to participate. I know I do. Have you ever had a question about theology or just wondered about something in the Bible that you were hesitant to ask? Do you have questions about how God operates? Things that maybe are difficult for you to believe? Maybe once your kids asked you how Noah got all those animals on the ark and you had no answer. Or did you ever wonder if Jonah really swallowed a whale? At the invitation of Pastor Pat and approved by our session, a box has been provided in the fellowship hall where Pastor Pat will receive our questions and try to shed some light on them for us. No questions are off, li are, are off limits except those that delve into politics. We aren't going there. <laughs> <laughs> this is not an invitation to stump Pastor Pat, although she says cheerfully that that probably will happen. She will gather these questions and plans a sermon around them on June 23rd. So this is important for us to announce for our snowbirds us who are leaving before June, um, like me. And so we think this prom is going to be promising and interesting for all of us. And there are cards in the box on which to write your questions or you can do them at home and just drop them in the following Sunday. These are all anonymous, of course. We probably should get our questions written by the end of May so Pastor Pat has time to plan her sermon. If you are a rain or snowbird, leave your questions with us before you leave and plan to be with us online on the 23rd. And so I'll hold up this box. This is what it will look like. And there's cards and a pen in here, but the directions, pretty much what I just said are on here. So this is what it looks like. So we do have six more birthdays in April and you'll see them in your bulletin, but we have none this week. So. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. <laughs> it's now time for passing of the peace. May the peace of Christ be with you all.
Please stand if you are able and join me in the responsive call to worship. This is the message we have heard and proclaimed to you that God is light and in God there is no darkness at all. Let us worship God, expressing our unity and praising God's name for bringing light into our world. We haven't sung that song for a long time. 2011. Oh, 2011. Wow. <laughs> Please join me in the unison prayer of confession. Eternal God, in whom we live and move and have our being, your face is hidden from us by our sins and we forget your mercy in the blindness of our hearts. Cleanse us all and deliver us from proud thoughts and vain desires. With lowliness and meekness, may we draw near to confessing our faults, confiding in your grace, and finding in you our refuge and strength. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, amen. A moment for silent reflection.
please join me in the responsive assurance of forgiveness. Hear Paul's words of assurance. If we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. In Jesus Christ, all our sins are forgiven. Please be seated. Are there any joys or concerns that you'd like to share this morning? Yes. What is his name? Bernard. Bernard? Yeah. Are there any other? Yes. Just a joy that uh, my mother just celebrated her 91st, her 94th birthday. Her name is Dorothea. Any others? We need to pray for those who are going back to their summer homes. We hope that they have safe trips and that they will be back with us again next winter or next fall. 
Are there any other joys or concerns this morning? This is certainly not a joy. This is certainly not a joy, but um, Jim and I are feeling blessed. He tripped. You probably have noticed he's scar-faced today. Um, but he tripped getting our mail on a curb, and uh, he just wasn't watching what he was doing. Um, but abrasions and chipped teeth and glasses can all be fixed, and we are so grateful that he didn't break a hip or leg or arm. So Thank you. We, we feel blessed in spite of it all. Any other joys or concerns? Let us continue our worship. Let us pray. Almighty Lord, in all the turmoil and all the trials that we face, we come to you and sometimes we come with doubts. But when you come to us, there is a peace that we understand and a peace that assures us that you are with us. We ask that you be with the snowbirds who are going back to their homes for the summer. We ask that you give them safe travel, that they will arrive at their destinations safely and that they will come back and worship with us again in the fall. We ask, O oh Lord, that you send your peace upon Bernard, that you help him to, to be confident in you and to have the peace of Christ with him as he awaits the results of the biopsy he has taken. We give you a great many thanks for Dorothea, for her 94th birthday. We give you thanks for her presence with her family and for the love that they share with one another. We also give you thanks, Lord, for the many people who were born in April. We ask that you be with them, that the birthdays they celebrate will be fantastic birthdays filled with joy and love. We ask that you be with Jim. We give you thanks that he was not hurt more than he was. And we ask that you send your healing spirit upon him, that day by day his beautiful purple face will, will, will fade and soon will be forgotten of the trials that he's had to deal with. We ask, Almighty Lord, that you be with our country, you be with our world. Be with the leaders of, of the world. Convince them of the need to do what is best, not only for their people, but for all the people of the world. We ask that you be with those who are homeless this day. Watch over them and take care of them. Help us to reach out to them in in whatever way we are able to do. We ask, Almighty Lord, that you convict our hearts, that we will do what is right, not only for ourselves and our families, but for those around us. Open our hearts, open our minds, that we will be receptive to ways of reaching out to those who are in need. We ask, Almighty Lord, that you hear all of our personal and all of our private concerns. May they all be according to your wisdom and according to your will. For we pray all these things in Jesus Christ's name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and give us the, we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Thank you. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Oh God, tell us what we need to hear and show us what we ought to do to obey Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me in the unison Psalter lesson. This is from Psalm 133. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred lives together in unity. It's like the precious oil on the head running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron. The color is robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord ordained his blessing, life evermore. Our Hebrew lesson this morning is from Isaiah 65, verses 17 to 25. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be offsprings blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. The epistle lesson this morning comes from The book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 32 through 35. Listen to the living word of God. And all the believers were one in heart and mind, 
No one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord, and and much grace was upon them. There were no needy peasants among persons among them. From for from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the cells, and put it in, put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to feed as he had need anyone as he had need. The gospel lesson comes from the gospel of of Luke chapter 20, verses 20, verses 19 through 31. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he had said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Through the doors, though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. When he said it to Thomas, Put your hand here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. When Jesus told him, Because you have seen, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Thomas did many more miracles, miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which were not recorded in this book. But these were written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that he and and that by believing you may have life in his name. Amen. Let us join together in prayer. Almighty Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our believer, Redeemer. Amen. This last week I went to visit my doctor, and he took the time to explain to me the benefits of, of exercise. <laughs> he held up ten fingers. And he started to remunerate each thing. He, he said there are 10 Ds. Diabetes, depression, 
dialysis, dementia. The list went on. And then he named the devil and death. At that point, I interrupted him. (laughs) I told him that I was not scared of the devil and that I was not scared of death. I informed him that I could be in perfect health and die today and die or die tomorrow or in the next 30 or 40 years from now. I suddenly realized that he and I were on different pages. His scare tactics were not working. I am confident in my relationship with Christ. I am confident in that relationship to the point where I have no fear of the devil. And I am confident in eternal life with Christ, so death holds no fear. As I left the doctor's office, though, I wondered how I was so confident. There was this tiny doubt of, how do I know? This is a legitimate question for each of us, just as it was a legitimate question for Thomas. Serene Jones in Feasting on the Word makes a very valid point that it is Jesus, it is Christ that comes to us. We do not seek out Jesus. Jesus comes and appears to each of us. Jesus had been crucified on the cross and he had been laid in the tomb. The There were ladies who, after the Sabbath was over, that they went to the tomb in hopes of finding a way to roll the the stone back or to find a way into the tomb so that they could anoint him with all the oils that they had. When the women arrived at the tomb, they found that the stone had been moved away and they found that the tomb was empty. So they went back to the disciples and they became witnesses, telling them all that they saw and they heard. Mary came to the tomb as well. She went in and she looked around and she met angels. And she asked them, where have you laid my Lord so that I can go and take care of him? Mary, the angels told him that he was gone that he had risen as he had promised he would. As Mary left the tomb, she encountered the risen Lord. And after she encountered the risen Lord, she went off and she became a witness to all the disciples of what had happened. The scripture from the Gospel of John this morning, chapter 20, verse that starts with verse 19. This was the first day of the week. And they were all, the disciples were all gathered in a room. The doors were locked. They were scared. They were concerned that the Jews were going to come and get them. And Jesus came and stood in their midst. And he greeted them with, peace be with you. He breathed on them. And then he sent them out to do the work that he had set aside for them. Thomas wasn't there with him. Thomas, <laughs> so when he, so when they witnessed to Thomas that they had seen the risen Christ, he didn't believe them. He told them that I need to see, to put my fingers in his, in the wounds in his hands, and put my hand in his in his side. I need to feel and touch and see before I will believe. The doors were shut and Jesus came and stood among among them and he searched out Thomas. He said, peace be with you. 
he invited Thomas to put his fingers into the wounds on his hand and in, into his side. He invited Thomas to see, to touch, and to know that he was indeed the risen Lord. Thomas had the witness account of all the disciples. He, also, he was able to physically touch the wounds and touch the body to help him believe that Jesus was alive. We have the witness of the Bible. We don't have the physical Christ to touch and to feel. We don't have as much as Thomas had to believe. We need to understand that this scripture that we read this morning is not about Thomas. It is about Christ. The scripture account is about Christ and how he appears to people. The real point of the gospel narrative is about God coming to us wherever we might be. John's answer to our questions about begin question begins at the door at, and we see at we see at the start of the story. John talks about how Christ how Jesus walk through a closed and locked door to get to Thomas. It is, it is not that Thomas, Thomas's doubt drives him to demand answers from Jesus. It is Jesus who is determined to reach out to a stubborn skeptic. When no one else seems able to convince Thomas it is Jesus who refuses to let a dead bolt on the door or chains block the movement of love toward the one who lacks faith. Jesus treats us exactly the same way. When doubt crowds out our hope, we can be confident that Jesus will come and meet us exactly where we are. John tells us that even though Jesus walks right up to Thomas, the disciples are not quite sure who he is. Thomas does not instantly recognize Jesus. He, we like, we like Thomas, will probably not recognize when Jesus comes even when he is two inches away from us. So how do we know? How do we know that Christ is risen? How do we know that he is alive and in our lives? The account of Thomas gives us two ways of knowing. When, Thomas, when Jesus first speaks to Thomas, he uses the simple words, Peace be with you. And Thomas is invited to touch, to feel, to examine. When God comes, we recognize God's presence in those moments when peace is offered, in those moments when life's most brutal violence is, is honestly acknowledged, when in the midst of this this bearing honesty, we realize that we are not alone, but we have, in fact, been found. In our doubt, Jesus' Jesus's appearance changes. We will not always know him, particularly when hardships have given us many reasons to doubt. But think back to those times when you have been in the most doubt, when you have had to face the hardships of life, that you've lost somebody you've loved, or, or you're in deep doubt because life is not going the way you think it should. How have you experienced Jesus? 
Did Jesus come through worship, through the hymns, through those uplifting songs that help us to realize that Christ is with us? Did we walk away from those times with peace, no longer doubting, knowing that Christ is with us? Did we let the richness of the Holy Spirit help us to believe the promises of faith? Or when we were at our lowest, did Christ come as a beggar, as a homeless person, reminding us of what we have, reminding us of how Christ is taking care of those who have, don't have the luxuries that we have, and yet they manage. Does, are we reminded and given peace that we know that God is with us and that Christ is with us and with them? Or have we, do we experience Christ in, in the old grand, wise grandmother who's wrapped in a shawl, who sees us grieving and comes up to us and gives us a warm hug and says, why don't you give me a call sometime? We'll talk. Or who lets us cry and sob on their shoulder and then tells us that we will be okay. It is those times when we are in the most the lowest parts, times of our lives, when we doubt that God even knows we exist or that Christ is with us, it's those times in the joyous singing, the joyous hymns of, of our faith, or when we find people who, who are infested with rags, and yet they have an unabiding faith in Christ, where we find the woman or the man who sees our grief and sees our troubles and reaches out to us and gives us a warm hug, it is then that we realize that they are the reason that Christ comes to us. Christ comes to us through them. And through them we know and we have confidence that he is risen, that he is alive. We have the testimony of the scriptures, we have the testimony of each other. But it is through the peace that we know that Christ is reaching out to us and that, we, that he loves us and that we are not left deserted and alone. We are invited to touch, to see, to touch, to know the love that is stronger than even death itself. We are invited to be confident that Christ is alive and that Christ is in each one of us. Even in the wounds, of Jesus, we find the life and the resurrection. Amen. Let us join together in prayer. Almighty Lord, we ask that you hear us and that you be with us. Help us to be convinced that even in our doubt, you will come and be with us that you will strengthen us with your love, that you will encourage us and help us to know that you are our Lord and our Savior and that you did not die forever but are resurrected and through your resurrection we are offered a new and better life. In Christ's name we pray, amen. 
We have a minute for mission opportunity this morning. I create static wherever I go, so there we go. <laughs> they say three minutes. Bless their hearts. <laughs> I'm Gail Jones. I'm actually Gail Kathleen Jones Jones because I married a Jones in 1954, and I kept him until 1991 when he died of cancer. And I have been a widow since then, by choice. Uh, God decided Jerry and I were married through eternity, and so that's the way we've kept it. I have three children, eight grandchildren, and 12 great-grandchildren. I was a university administrator in my career, and I did the annual fund drive for that university for 16 years. So none of you knew that about me, I bet. Did you? No. You probably think it's that giggly Gail. Well, Gail is giggly, but like you, I've had the sorrows, and I've had the joys, and I've had depression, I've had a few illnesses, but at almost 89, I am perfectly healthy. I take one water pill now for high blood pressure because I seem to still like to rev up. And uh, it's hard. It, it takes a lot more to rev up now. <laughs> but today, this is a moment when we are considering the future of this precious church. As you heard the other day, Morella reminded us that we moved into this church 15 years ago. And I am celebrating 25 years of being a part of this church. So I was here when we were renting the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and we decided, because they decided they didn't want us anymore, that we needed to find a church of our own. And we started a campaign. And that campaign included those of us who were in the education world, who were not wealthy, but who had adequate means, it included the wealthy, who were in the corporate world, the construction world, and made big bucks. And all of us were asked to try to come up with something over and above our normal giving. And how did we do that? Well, each of us found ways, and we were able to give $1,000 minimum. Some people gave five, some gave 10. They, they went to their resources and figured out what they could do to stay a part of our church. Then we started looking at buildings that would be available to us. And finally, we walked into this building. There were about eight of us, my mother. My mother lived with me the last 19 years of her life. And we were a part of this church together until she died. Anyway, we walked in this doorway, started down the aisle, looked up, who did we see? Oh, I'm gonna set the world on fire today. I, you know, I'm good at that. <laughs> but we saw Christ, and we felt his presence as we walked down this aisle. And then, and some of you who have been here longer than I understand it better than I, but out of the blue, our church inherited, I think it was $140,000 from a person whose name none of us recognized. He had been a seasonal person, and he had written us into his will. And if I'm saying it wrong, it's simply because my memory is impaired. But anyway, this is what I still believe, that this was a gift from God to show us that we were on the right track. Anyway, we were able then to buy this church, and we had our first full-time pastor in the presence of Christine Dickerson. Before that, it had been part-timers. So all of a sudden, we were paying a full-time salary, 
benefits, all of that. House payments, <laughs> utility bills, all of those things. And we blossomed. And along came poor health for Christine. She retired. And at that very point, COVID hit. And so we went through lack of our normal pastor into a period of having to close the doors for a while. But do you know who saved the day? People sitting right here. Our choir, our band, our deacons, our session members, and the people who worked with those various committees. It's a going place, folks. It's got the spirit, it's got the love. And I could talk for hours about our search committee, but I'll do that another time if you want to hear it. But anyway, today we're just encouraging you to do like I'm doing, like all of us are going to be doing, praying about where those extra dollars can come to keep us going. It used to be my daddy would tell me, you know, if a quarter, you put a quarter in that pot today and a quarter tomorrow, imagine what you'll have at the end of the week. Well, that's what we need to do now is figure out how we can drop those quarters in. And I came from a family that had 50 people in our one church in Oklahoma City. My grandparents had seven children and the rest was grandchildren and great-grandchildren. All 50 of us went to one church. And you can imagine how I felt sense of family when I walked in that church all of, for 19 years. I feel that when I walk into this church. You are my family. I'm here alone now. You are my family. I go home now for the summer to Seattle area, and I'll have family there, but I watch you every Sunday, and I revel in it. So all of you know that my eyes are on you. <laughs> You've blessed me so much. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Hear the words of institution of our Lord Jesus Christ as they are delivered by the Apostle Paul. On the night in which our Lord was betrayed, he took bread. 
When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup, and he gave that to his disciples, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Drink ye all of it. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes again. Let us join together in prayer. O God, who by the life and death and rising again of your dear Son has consecrated thee for us a new and living way into the holiest of, ho- of all, cleanse our minds, we ask, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that drawing near to you with a pure heart and conscience undefiled, we may receive these your gifts without sin and worthy to magnify your holy name. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is very right and our bounden duty that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, for all thy bounty, bounties known and unknown, but chiefly are, the, are we bound to praise. We praise you for your great love which you, has drawn us to yourself in Christ and made us to sit in heavenly places with him who is our peace. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your majesty. Glory to be, be to you. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Most gracious God, the the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who once offering up of himself upon the cross, we commemorate before you. We earnestly desire your goodness to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And we ask you to bless and sanctify with your word and spirit, these your gifts of bread and wine, which we set before you, that we may receive by faith Christ crucified for us, and so feed upon him, that we may be made one with him and he with us. And we offer and present unto you ourselves our souls and bodies to be reasonable, holy, and living sacrifices. And we ask that you accept these, our sacrifices of praise and thanksgiving. As in fellowship with all the faithful in heaven and on earth, we ask you to fulfill in us and all people the purpose of your redeeming love. Amen. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
Take, eat. This is Christ's body broken for you. After the same manner, our Lord Jesus took the cup, gave it to his disciples and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Drink ye all of it. For often as you drink this, eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes again. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Cut off from me, you can do nothing. Christ's blood shed for you. Let us continue our morning worship in the giving of our tithes and our offerings and giving of who we are and what we do. Let us worship God.
Let us pray. Almighty Lord, receive these our gifts. May our gifts and our lives be always to your glory in all that we do and all that we are. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. As you go out into the world today, go with the Holy Spirit, seeking out where you can make a difference, where you can give the peace to those who need it the most. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you, both now and forevermore. Amen.